right, this is for all you 38 caliber shooters, whether it be a 38 Special and 357 Magnum. Uh, whether you shoot out a revolver like your Smith & Wesson 686-6. These uh, guns were checked uh, to make sure they weren't loaded. Or your 6-shot 38 Special uh, Arm Score M206. Well, there's another cartridge out there that kind of disappeared off the market. Not, all, not entirely, but uh, it, it's still around. And it was the 38 Smith & Wesson. Now, the 38 Smith & Wesson was designed in 1877. And it was actually designed for the uh, Smith & Wesson top rake revolvers. And I think Harrington and Richard made one as well. And, and I think a few other uh, revolvers that were top rake. But this is before the um, advent of uh, swing out cylinders came around. Uh, so originally the um, cartridge was a um, 375 diameter case. And let me see, measure one out for you here. And this one's 776. Okay. And it came with a 93 grain or a 120 grain bullet. And it went up pretty quick. It went about maybe 760 feet per second out of a 4 or 5 inch barrel, which is pretty good, you know, for a small little cartridge like that. And, um, you know, officers used them, policemen used them, cavalry officers used them, uh, you know, you name it. Even civilians had them, you know, for uh, protection. Anyways, um, we uh, loaded ours, uh, you know, with a uh, a 200 grain bullet during the turn of the century, because police departments wanted something a little bit more heavier, and um, you know that would uh, stop somebody a little bit faster. So they made a 38 200 version, which was the uh, super police, basically what it was. Anyways, during World War II, the British wanted to uh, change their sidearms from a uh, a Webley. 455 265 grain bullet to the Enfield 38 calibers. And they asked the United States, hey, can you make a cartridge with a 200 grain lead bullet like you guys did? And they said, sure, why not? We can do that for you. So, anyways, they uh, made a bunch of um, uh, top brake revolvers, Enfield revolvers, well, the British did. And the Land Leans program, um, we gave them. Uh, Swing out cylinder, uh, 38 M uh, S and W M and P's during the Lenny's program. So they had the top brake revolvers as long as as well as the uh, swing out cylinder revolvers. But anyways, um, they were quite successful in using that cartridge. And when the Germans found out about it, they cried to the Hague Convention, or the Hague Convention, and they said, "Hey, your soft soft bullets are deforming and causing you know tissue damage to our soldiers." Uh, giving them lack of chance to survive. So the British said, okay, fine, we'll go ahead and change our bullet style. So what they did, they went from a 200 grain soft lead bullet to a 178 grain uh, copper jacketed bullet. It looked almost like a truncated cone type with a round nose on it. Um, so they did that, and the, and the ballistics were pretty much the same. And um, from there they used that cartridge to uh, uh, as a standard uh, service or a cartridge. But anyways, the Enfield revolvers were actually sighted in for 200 grain. <clears throat> so basically, what happened was when they fired the 178 grain, you know, they had a they had a point of high because the uh, the uh, point of aim was uh, quite low. So, anyways, I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, once I get these, um, I'll make about maybe 50 of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the um, British 380 200 using two different bullets. I'll be using the Lyman uh, 170 grain semi wood cutter <coughs> and the RCBS 213 grain lead round nose bullet. And uh, if you look, and I can I can show you right here, the crimp groove on top actually you know has enough room in the bottom. Half the half the shell case has a lot of room for more powder. I can actually put powder in there and uh, make it work. Now the 170 grain bullet, same thing with that. Use the cannula here. And it gives you about approximately half a uh, half a case uh, to put part charge in it. Uh, there is load data for these uh, cartridges, along with the Colt 38 uh, short. Um, Lee Richard Lee has one in his book, and uh, right now I'll be using uh, the uh, number nine uh, spear book, and it has data for the uh, 38 Smith and Wesson. Now the loads I'll be making uh, for the Smith and Wesson 
it is not designed for top break revolvers by any means. Those things are old if if you can even find one of those. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go in the garage and I'm going to show you how I, uh, how I made these things. Alright, so we're in the garage now and what I've done was I marked the um, case to where it should be and let's see it's a little above where it's supposed to be put just a tad under it here that should be right there <clears throat> all right all right so um, I have my RCBS chase trimmer but I don't have the pilot for it so we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way with a file and how we do that it's a little bit of uh, work but uh, what you do is you put your shelf foot in like so and then you're gonna go back and forth keep doing that until you get to the uh, point here. In the meantime, what you do is you chamfer it. Okay, and then you want to size it. Make sure all the, you debur it. Get all the burrs out of there so you don't scratch your dies up. And then you just continue on. Kind of falls out, you got to be careful with that. And um, another thing to, to be watch out for is that you're working with your hands exposed to metal and steel and sharp objects, so you got to be really careful. Make sure your file don't fall apart, like this one here. And we'll get back with you on the uh, finished product, we'll measure it out. And then what you want to do is kind of like size it back again. Alright, so we're about right about here now. We've got a little bit of ways to go. So we'll just keep filing. And then right before uh, we finish the um, filing, I'll show you how to even it out with a hand file. Okay, so right now we're about 776. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to check for some high spots. 80, 780. 83, 86, 83, 82, 84, 86. So what we're going to do, we'll take that high spot in 86, and we're going to put it right there in the front, and just slowly polish it up. We're going to uh, chain for a little bit. And what we're doing is we're looking for the high spots and then um, take the file and slowly trim it down so that it should be as even as possible. All right, let's give it another measure here. Well, 775 right now, and then I have a high spot. Well, I had a high spot. Yeah, 85. So this here is the highest spot here. Put it in the very front. Okay. And just slowly file it down. Again, being careful because remember, you got uh, your hands are exposed to all the metal sharp stuff. Alright, let's take a look at it one more time. Uh, 
Okay, 775, that should do it right there. We're gonna stop right there. I got some low spots, like 72. I got one that says 70. 74. That, that'll work. That should work. Alright, so give it another sizing and try it one more time. 74. Alright, that should do it for right there. It's right there. Alright, so let's go back inside and uh, do a recap on the uh, project okay so um, we made these by hand took a little time to make them but I got six done already and they're all pretty consistent uh, let's just grab one here randomly zero it out like so well grab another one randomly Alright, 775. Alright, let's go ahead and give them a. All right, let's go and see if they'll fit in the gun. So these are all sized and measured, and they are chamfered. I got one somewhere around here. There she is. All right. We all fit like a charm. They all came out easy. All right, let's try the uh, M206. Yeah, it's um, a little project. I think it's worth the manual labor. You know, if you don't have the money to go buy them or you want to do it right away, just make a few samples uh, that's that's fine too you know I'll make a little bit more make maybe 20 more or so and then uh, well it helps if you hold the cylinder in all right all right worked like a charm all right so we're gonna make a few more of these uh, you know and then uh, we'll get back with part two we'll actually load them up and then uh, do a test fire on them so, you know, we're, again, we're going to be using the 170 grain load. And as you can see, you know, it, it has a lot of, there's a lot of room for, uh, for powder. Okay. And there's the other crimp group for the super police. Yeah. That's perfect. I think they'll uh, dig in the uh, 380, uh, 200 uh, British round duplicates. It's going to work out just fine. I'll be using unique powder. And then uh, we'll do a test, ballistic test on both guns, 38 Special and the 357 uh, Smith & Wesson 686-6. Anyway, this is Lead Bullets for Life. Thanks for joining me today. Stay tuned for part two. Have a good evening.